Hello! Hello guys and welcome to episode 4 of the Tamiya MB01. This is an Australian exclusive build. It is. This is a Fiat Abarth. Now on episode 1, 2 and 3 I was joined by Mini Professional and Grand Pooh Bar Tony Gray. But today we need to get the painting done. That's so it. So I've called in none other than Airbender himself. BJ. Am I? He Airbender. is a painter extraordinaire and really good at these things. So, Well, this is a stage you guys have got it up to yeah. in your first three builds. Yeah. So all the chassis is done, electronics are in there, and this has actually been test driven. So it's all working fine. It's been race tuned on the shop floor. That's it. So I guess in preparation, you've also cut out the body. I did absolutely cut that out. Okay. And, and that's, we've just that's roughly probably my weakest point. So I do, silly as it sounds, like to cut out as many bodies as I can because mm -hmm. it's not something that I enjoy um, very much, but it does actually take a fair bit of practice and skill. Yeah. Okay, so we've got it sitting there, basically where we need it. So all the holes are in the right spots. We've got the holes for the mirrors as well. Yeah. And then we're going to paint this up close to the design of the box, but sort with of. slightly different colours, we're thinking. And we're going to put the engine in it. And the Yeah, that's right. We've got the engine here. So and we'll this is where your up. craft is really going to come up. And we've so got it's going to sit in there. And we've got the boot lid. That's it. Or the bonnet lid, whichever way you call it, on that That's sort it. of rear engine car. And there's and a couple of supporting It's going to look so cool. It will. Well, I suppose the next thing that we should do is I've, I have cut it and stuff, but I haven't cleaned it, so I should go off and wash that. You should. And you can talk to the lovely viewers at home about what we're going to paint it with and, yep, and what sort sure. of motif. Okay. All right. So let me give you the body. I've got to go and down the while basement. While you're doing that, got to go down the basement and get Nan's hair dryer as well. <laughs> sure. Yeah. If I can get you, just rinse these off as well. Rinse them. Well, do? clean them. So clean it the same way as that. And the hinges? And the hinges, yep. So these bits that we're going to paint later. And I'm just going to do that in a little bit of um, warm water and dishwashing liquid. That's what you nothing, need. Nothing yeah, funky. just to take all the, the surface um, oils off it. And we're going to paint this with the matching paint of the bodywork. Do you need to prime that first? No, I'm not going to prime it. All right. No, no just, need to prime it. Just raw dog it. That's, That's going to it. completely just get the same paints and we're going to be using yep. PS paints anyway we'll use PS paints to match it and then I'm going to put a clear over it. you can talk about that while I go okay. off and do this all right okay now we've got our bag of tricks here so, a collection of paints that we do use in all our various projects now white we're definitely going to use smoke we'll consider using the smoke for tinting the windows what else will we use we may use some silver for backing but with this car, we're going to go with the recommended Corsa Grey, which is a very light sort of blue grey. And then on the skirts, we're going to go for this Nine Steps Orange. Okay, so they're our main colours there. And then what else do we have? We need our tape, which is very important. So we're using the Tamiya masking tape. That's the 18mm. And then what else is in here? We've got the thinner 6mm. Okay, so I'll be using both of these, a 6mm, the thinner one is easier to flex, so I'll be using that to outline the, uh, the flares, and then the rest can be filled in with the thicker stuff. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I need to plan how this is going to work. Okay, so from the top camera, and this is a manual here with the painting instructions. Okay, so we've already done the cutout, which was over this side. Now this is where we need to mask off the windows and the masks are actually included uh, they're right here there we go so they're in the sticker sheet bag now I just need to cut those out so I have some sharp scissors there's quite a few of them so we've got uh, six eight and then there's all these decals here. I haven't decided exactly which ones we're going to use, but we'll definitely use the trims and, and all the logos. Still thinking about how to do the lights, because we might just use these for the moment and then I'll cast the other ones in some clear and we'll think about actually lighting them up with some LEDs. Okay, so what else we got here? So this indicates where we're going to be masking it off. In the manual, all these lower parts and the flares here at the back, they're meant to be white, but these are going to be the orange parts. Now, since it's going to be easier to mask off these first, I'll be spraying the lighter color, which is a cause of gray. 
across the top. And the danger of doing that is when we actually pull off the mask and spray the orange, the orange may influence the grey colour. So we'll just make sure that we'll back it with a lot of white. We might even do some silver in between just to change the colour a bit because <clears throat> Brett actually wants this to look a little bit dirtier than it actually is. So we'll see what we can do to influence that but make sure that the orange doesn't come through completely. Okay, so while Brett is actually washing up and then we'll dry it off, let's see how it all goes together. So we'll notice that the instructions show you how to mask and it is telling you to mask it as I was planning. So around the, uh, um, the flares and the front bumper first, spraying the cores gray, and then peeling it back and then we'll spray the second color and then the protective coating needs to come off before the stickers go on. Now we will need to cut out the holes here for these detail parts, so the grill and the lights as well. And then here we go for the decal instructions. Alright, now still waiting for... Right, so in the meantime, I'll just get these masks and I'll start cutting them out. I have this prepared. Man, you gotta have it back in 10 minutes! Nan's on it. Nan was a bit reluctant. She's got her hair in curlers. So, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, well, so, at least she's still got it. That's what? true. Could you um, just, oh, just reach over there, mate? I need some power, dear. I need some power. Right. And I'm going to make some disturbing noise. Disturbing. So hopefully with the uh, magic of Hollywood, all right. we can make it all disappear. All right, I'm going to cut these up in the meantime. That's probably a boring part anyway, isn't it? What's that? So my method of cutting is just, I cut roughly, so I can make each size manageable, like that, and then I trim closer later. Because I find it really hard to cut accurately when I've got a whole sheet of masking tape just flapping about in the air. So we've got three bits there, and there's a fourth bit. Okay, so I'll start with the rear windscreen. Now I prefer using really small sharp scissors. It gives me a bit more control. It takes a bit longer, but it gives a better result in the end. How's your hair looking? That's okay. There's a definite tang in the air. Tang? Why is there tang in the air? I think I'm burning. Oh, you're burning? It's just the end of my fingers burning. Well, tang is normally felt on the tongue. Is it? So, if I can taste your burning, that's pretty serious, isn't it? Yeah. You're not telling me. Did you ever drink tang when you were a kid? No, mate. No? Well, there's probably a lot of people watching this that don't know what tang is. It used to be a, uh, an orange flavoured drink that was in a powder that you mixed up with water. I used to drink it a lot as a kid. It's meant to be a good source of vitamin C which was probably a lie. Alright so there's the rear. Remember the old vitamin C tablets you used to get and you crunch them up? Oh yeah you can still get those can't you? The orange flavoured one. Yeah yeah. You go, mm, that's yummy. <laughs> yeah, give I'm me sure more. I'm <laughs> sure they don't feed that to kids now. Look at those chewy ones, don't they? Oh, I don't those know. Those gummy things. I don't know if that's a good idea either. I don't know. I'm more of a believer in getting all my vitamins from the food these days. Yeah, but that's what happens at your age. <laughs> Is that? I don't know. I know a lot of people that just survive on supplements. The, the young kids today, mate, it's all... Um, Why? What are walk, they into? Walkers, donuts and monster energy drinks. Yeah, yeah but that's, that's the sugar bit, right? The simple carbs. That's all, all youngsters need. They just need to change as they get older, right? Well, that's like you with the tank. <laughs> exactly. I guess so. There you Can go. I? Thanks for making that... Um, I'm going to get a top-up. That connection. 
Top up a, for what? A top made up. Oh, what? Tank. I'm sure if we did a Google search, we'll probably find the original logos and stuff. You could do a Tang sponsored a bus. Could I? I'll be the only one that sort of understands what it's all about, I think. This is. Men's hair dry is really letting me down today. It's not, blowing, it's not blowing very hard. Isn't it? Well, I think she's got. You've got it on the really hot setting? I think she's got a fluff. Well, the way that it's all like. crumpling up, I'd say so. <laughs> it's changing shape, is it? Yeah, a little bit. Well, I oh, thought well. that we might go for the um, the rippled vinyl effect on the roof. Oh yeah, we were talking about that, weren't we? Tony P was having a look at it. He was suggesting maybe we could get some fabric and put it on the top. And make it look like it's, it's partially wound back. Which sounds cool, but it seems like extra work. You're not burning your fingers, are you? Um, well, the smell would indicate that I clearly am. Oh, I thought they were already burnt to a crisp. How much further can you burn things that have turned into charcoal? Carbon, my friend, carbon. Carbon. We like Ooh, carbon, don't we? Look at that, it's pretty tidy. Mm. Now, the reason that I have just washed it with a gentle detergent and hot water, mm. then followed up with the hair dryer mm. um, or the heat gun. It's not because it's the fastest technique. It's mm. just, I don't know. I, I find it. I don't like to now it's been washed stick my hands in there. No, that's fair. You can, in essence, just wipe it out with IPA. You could. And that sort of stuff. But I just find it, I don't know, it sort of never let me down this technique. And I, I think I just do it just because of that. Yeah, it could be. I mean, some I, people I like don't the even, idea. Some people don't even wash their bodies. Um, mm. You know, and it really does depend on the manufacturer. So I know that Biddy Design, for example, you know we use a lot of Biddy bodies here. Mm. They definitely use a very strong um, release agent. Yeah. Um, and if you do not wash a Biddy body, it will um, like flare up all the paint. Oh, even, will it? Even an aggressive paint like a Tamiya will like flare it all up. Yeah. Oh, really? I didn't know that. I'm just doing the modeling bit now. Are oh, the engine bits? Hopefully the audio man doing this is not hating me too much. Well, with any luck... Anything that, anything that drowns out my annoying voice. <laughs> right? That's it. Well, I'm almost, almost there. I'm on my last... We're not even going to airbrush this, are we? No, it's all, it's all going to be cans. Lucky, lucky last time we painted the frog we had the... Um, the new extraction system fitted. That's right. Imagine if we didn't have that. Yeah. No, I'm actually going to be painting it outside, just from a mess point of view. Yeah. Because the the Tamiya cans, they, especially when I've got it heated up to 83 degrees. The full hose mode, yeah. Oh, full full pressure. I talk about heating. Now you're talking about how you prefer sort of the process of using a hairdryer. Yes. I actually like that too because I, I think, you know, I may not be absolutely correct, but I think a heated body does take paint better. I may be absolutely wrong, but that's, that's my thinking behind it. I suppose to a point, I mean, if you heated plastic too much, I suppose it starts to leach out some of the oils. No? Would it? I don't know. I imagine. I don't know. I don't know. But here I'm we go. sure right. the boffins will tell us. So these are all good to go, right? I'm going to start putting on some of these masks. So I just do a dry application and see how it fits first. Holding up to the light. Okay. So all I'm going to do is peel the section back a bit. And cut off a little section of the backing. Uh, this is the master here. Do this again so I look inside here like I'm wearing a hat. A hat? Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Some of the angles that you find yourself doing what is seemingly a really simple task. You'd think so, wouldn't you? We'll and put this down there. there. None, you can wait! Jeez. Getting aggro. She's getting aggro. I'm gonna put that down there. Oh, well, I hit my bench. Here we go. Alright, so here. Let me just get this. 
in the right spot. And it is somewhat of an art getting it lined up. It is, isn't it? Hang on. Let's you need more? Back a bit. It's, it's because of the curve. It's How do they recommend taking it from the middle? Have you seen in the instructions in the Tamiya? They recommend cutting a strip out of the middle. Oh, I've done that before too. Yeah? Yeah, similar sort of idea. Because it is easier to... I find just to do it on the edge exactly like you're doing. Like this. Mm. Alright, so I've got one bit tacked on already. And you know now that it's tacked on that it can't really move as long as you don't crease it up. No, that's right. So you just got to gently you know, fold this back. And I tend to do this. So you see how it's curled? Yeah, we'll have a look at the top camera. Yeah, look. And I'll just push it through like this. I hope you washed your hands before you started. Hope no. you're not getting your greasy little mitts all inside my clean body. There we go. That's pretty much spot on. So as we I wouldn't rub it down, anything less from you. Make sure the edges are really well pressed down. And you will find extra detail on the Tamiya body, like the way that it's actually pressed in mm. the windscreen, though. No? Yes. And that's yes. An, an aged design. You know? Aged. Well, that's the way the door frames and the window frames would have been back then. Well, I guess so. That's right. All right, so exactly the same thing. So we're cutting a little bit off. There's a rear window now. Do the same sort of thing. This is a little bit trickier. We've got this engine thing there here. Have you explained to the people how we're going to go coarser grey and uh, nine steps orange? I have. That's going to be have. awesome. I have. It's going to really stand out. And we've got a bit of silver there. What's the silver for? Well, silver we could use for backing. Haven't really decided yet. I would like to see it, I think, backed in silver. I think just because I, I don't want the orange to pop too bright. I want it to be more of a vintage orange. A vintage orange? Yeah. Oh, really? Like a tang colour. Like a what? Tang. You know the drink tang? Wrong, yeah. You got it upside down. Could have. No, it shouldn't be. Somehow I've stretched it funny, I think. Or am I looking at the... No, it's alright. It's just the angle that I'm on because it's pressed in, it looks a bit... It could be, because I'm, look, I'm looking monkey. at the reflections from the... And it is quite pronounced, like it's like a 2 mil step in. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay, let's work that alright. Okay, let's continue. So just got to do the sides now. You did good cutting. Did I? Are you doing the front quarter windows too or not? Do you trust me to cut them? Yeah. Gee. Left rear. Nice left rear. That's the back of the car on the left hand side you'll find. Is it? Most times. Oh, I don't know. Are you certain about that? Oh, do you want to cut those out? No. Oh, I forgot all about it, sorry. Typical half job. There you go, thank you. I actually prefer to use, and it's only because what I, I know, I've got the BD Design Curve Scissors, mm -hmm. and I find them really good. Yes, they are hard to do a straight line, but when you're following a printed line, mm -hmm. I find them just a nice bit of control. They are very sharp. Sharp's what you want. Because they, they do straight and curved, don't they? They do straight and curve. I don't have the straight ones. I keep... I keep meaning to um, get invested in the straight ones. Right. And it's not until I'm usually halfway through a body and I go, I've got to get some straight ones. Really? But usually I use the old score and flex method for doing straight sections on bodies. Mm -hmm. So I just use my nine steps hobby knife and I'll score the lexin. It gives a really sharp yeah. finish. Just going to make sure you have a really fresh blade. And, you want it. and you've got to make sure that you hold your knife at a 45 degree angle. 45 to make, degree? To make sure, you know, parallel to the, the body shell that you're cutting to make sure that it follows and cuts nicely. Ah. Because the, the precision blades that we use in nine steps are actually, they follow. They do. They do. I won't say they're surgical grade. I mean, they could well be. I wouldn't recommend it. Only an emergency. First aid. That's it. That's straight for the straight for the Yokomo tire glue and my nine steps hobby knife. Fix anything. 
Alright, so that's looking alright. How many times have you dropped a knife off the table and it's ended up in your foot? Oh, at least twice. Because I, I don't know, maybe I'm just a bit old and creepy, but I find myself... Creepy? I, I do my uh, C with clothes on, so I'm not naked, but I do definitely find myself doing it barefooted. Is that a thing? The barefooted RC guy. So when the knife hits your foot, you know about it? Yeah. Well, I might have a sock on. If it's winter, it's real dead of winter. So you like the sensation? You don't like the delayed, you feel pressure on the top of a boot and then the blade slowly goes in? Yeah, or you, you move funny and... Oh, got a, got a soggy foot. <laughs> you know? <laughs> the soggy foot. That's the name of our podcast, isn't it? Oh, here's another method. Since, since I can't wait for your scissors, I'll just fold it back like this. Tuck and fold. Sorry. And then well, I was doing a precision this. job. You were. You just, were. just don't yell at me, because I know that it won't be up to your standard. Oh, PS1, we got a can of unicorn. Yep, yep. PS1 is still fairly hard to come by. It really is the biggest victim of COVID, can we say that? PS1 and PS5 have Can been... Can you say that? I don't know. I don't know <laughs> if you can, but you said it already. The supply chain of PS1 and PS5 have been the uh, biggest victim of COVID. It's been pretty say. patchy, but that's because everyone's using it. And makes it exclusive. Yeah. It's exciting, doesn't yeah. it? Who would have thought yeah. white and black paint could get exciting? No, but there you go. There are, there are the times we live in. Easily and the, excited. And the Tamiya paints, I'm sure that we've said it before, are a really good pigment. I might leave you to do some masking. Yeah, yeah leave me. I'm, I'm under control. Yeah. I'm under control. Because you've got to do the windows and then you've got to do all the good stuff. Yeah, so I've got to do all the flares and such. All right. All right, I'll all right, join I'll you in a minute. I'll see you a bit later, yeah? All right, so I'm still doing here. I've got the, the right front. So I've just got to get the curve right. Can be a bit tricky. But take your time. That's about right there. Does it look right. It's probably overstepped the mark a little bit, so I'm going to pull that off. Try again. So just bear in mind that when you're doing this, when you tack down the end, if it doesn't look right, you can always just peel it up and, and do it again. Maybe that's about right. Looks a bit too long here, so let's try again. There we go. So we've got our main windows in place. Looks right. Press down the edges so I don't get any overspray. And then I've just got the little tiny ones to do, which really helped to cut out for me. So how do these work? So these are quite a bit bigger. Let me just double check the manual. Covers that little door pillar. Okay. All right, so that goes there, folds into there. All right, I think I got that sussed. here as I press it down is that little flap right here which will help cover up that pillar so just slowly with my fingertip I'll 
start on this edge there, slowly press it down, and that'll allow that tape to actually fill in. that indented pillar. Let's see if we can do it like this. So you can see how it's followed that edge. I'm just going to make sure we put our finger in there, just press it all down, just so we don't get any overspray coming in from the top or the bottom. Okay, so let's do the other side. I'll keep that zoomed in so you can sort of see what's going on. Alright, so again, I'm going to cut that edge. Alright, let's see if I can do this so you can still see what's happening. Maybe not. Alright, just bear with me as I get in the right spot first. Let's go right. Okay, so you see there. I've got that tacked right on that point of that there. And now start taking off the backing. Let's see how I fold it across. And we just press it down. So I'm not gonna push on that end that's gonna cover up the, the pillar. See how that's just sitting loose at the moment. Get rid of that. Okay, so we're going to press it down flat. And see how it's still sitting up high. And we'll start from this edge here. And we'll just press it in. So that's going to slowly along the edge. So you fill in the pillar. See that? And then we'll start pushing in the actual center of that pillar. It goes all the way to the other end. There we go. So you might notice that this one's got a little bit of a gap. Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit of tape to cover up that gap. But I'm sure the decal for the pillar is going to cover up most of it, but we just want to make sure that we don't get any gray going through that section. Okay, so let's get a little bit of 6mm. Okay. That's all we need. A close look here. And actually let me trim off the edge so we don't have the little teeth marks. That's not straight now. Pull it on the edge here. Okay. So then I'm going to press that down. Then from this corner, let's press it into here. And you see how that's fully covered up that gap now. All right, so that's it for the masking of the body. All the window masks are done, so now I'll need to mask up of all the sides and such. Okay, so I'm going to be using this thin tape. Let's clear off this bit here. Now with areas where it's totally flat, like across the sides here, a thicker tape is actually easier to use because it keeps a straight edge. And then we use a thinner tape around these curves around here. All right, so we'll be using this 18 mil. So let me just make sure that's nice and clean. Okay, so pull it across. So we just want to measure it just a bit longer than the part we're gonna mask. And let's have a look. Bit hard to see actually. I just want to start from one end. We're just looking for the lines with the light backlighting it. OK, 
Okay, so it's just tacked on in a couple of spots. I'll check from this side. That looks alright. Okay, so what I've done is I've just tucked down the, the top. And that's the edge that is really important because that's where the paint's going to contact. We'll make sure that that top edge is like really, really flat on all these edges, particularly around these, these curved edges here too. And then we'll start pressing down all the way to towards the bottom. Okay, and so that's our actual sharp edge that's going to hold the line for the orange. So over here, I'm just going to fold it around a little bit. This side too. And I'll fold it so that it just gets out of the way. We don't get the tack gripping anything. Okay, so now I'm going to do the opposing side. Alright, so again, I'll hold it up to the light. Okay, I've tacked it in two spots, let's check it. Back one's a little bit low. So, pull it up. And reposition. Check that again. That actually looks alright now. Okay, and we do exactly the same thing. So, start pressing down from the top because that's our most important edge. Fold this around. Like so. Because these are the edges that we don't want any paint to leak. We're going to fold the edges again. Good there. I'm just going to get a little bit of tape and run it on the bottoms to seal off this mask. That's fully sealed up. Okay. Simples. All right, doing the same for this side. So this part's actually got a little bit of edge here. Now we could probably trim that afterwards, but it'd probably look cleaner if I just masked it now. Less chances of any overspray of the gray. We don't want any of that sort of adulterating. This second pop. Okay, so that's fully masked now. All right, so the sides, skirts are done. And I'm just folding the edges a little bit so we don't get the tack again. Don't want to stick too much of it onto the protective coating because when we remove it, we don't actually want to peel it off yet before the orange is applied. Okay, let's do the wheel arches here. All right, so I'm going to start using my thin stuff. I'm going to try and get enough of that to cover the whole arch. 
see. My stuff on this end. This is more pronounced. Okay, so I've tacked it just on the bumper there. Just looking at the edge and following. On the arch. So let's check it from this side. It looks right. Keep going along. Just doing little sections at a time. And we can actually stretch this because we're only doing like 5 mil to 10 mil at a time. If it doesn't quite match, we can actually pull it in the direction that we want it. Yep, that's looking pretty good. And as we get closer here, we just have to work out where that line is. And we've matched it here. Alright, so let's still double check it from the front, see if it matches up. I think it looks pretty good. It may not match here completely, but I think it looks alright. Sometimes it's a trick on the eye because polycarbonate has got that thickness to it. And you're actually seeing double lines because you've got the outside line and also the inside line. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so I've got our excess just hanging there. And we've also got a little section here that hasn't been masked off yet. But I'm going to concentrate on the, the inner line first and then we'll deal with the rest of it and we'll fill it in. So for the moment let's just fold this across, get it out of the way. Okay, this isn't done that wheel arch, might as well do this side. And exactly the same thing, we'll start off with this point here because it's the most pronounced easier to see the edge and I'm holding up to the light light so I can see the reflection or actually the refraction of the light in those curves. to look at it. Alright, there we go. Have a bit of a look. I think it looks alright. Might have to pull it a bit tighter. There we go, I think it looks pretty sharp. Right, curves are the trickiest. Because what I've done here is, because I've stretched it a little bit, there will be a, um, a danger that it will pick up as well. And when I say pick up, it's going to lift from the surface. Now the longer you leave it, so if you leave it for the next day to paint, the larger the chance of that happening. So, always press it down really tight, and then also press them down just before you start spraying. Okay, so that's looking alright. Let's go across the bumper. Let's do that centre section. 
So there's a, quite a pronounced curve. So I will be stretching this as we go. So to find a starting point. So you see as I'm stretching it across. So there's the edge here, just about done. And now I've just got to stretch this side to match. Right, let's check from the front. That looks alright. angle we need to do now. Okay, so it's going to dip down. What I'm going to do is try to get this to pull up this way. So with this one. So you can see how I folded those. Just on the edges there. Alright, so I'm going to continue on, we're going to get all these matched up, then we'll do the back, and then we'll do the filling process. Doing these bits probably easier doing small parts at a time. Adding a little tape pieces at a time, just get these complex curves sorted. So it looks like, yeah, I think it looks okay. See so that how it's matching that, that line? And then we just have to copy the same for this side. So 
they're constantly checking from the front. Just make sure it looks right. wanted to match all those the lines yep I'm pretty happy with that okay so now let's do the rear end and for the back it actually is meant to stop across here but I think we'll extend the orange all the way across because I think that's gonna look nice with the metallic engine floating around there as well okay so let's do our thin stuff again because we've got some big curves to deal with. You see how I always like quite long pieces because I don't like to do multiple pieces along here. For me I think it just having one single piece of tape there's less chances of uh, getting any leakage. Alright so let's have a look at that. That's pretty good. going along swimmingly. Alright, I'll be right there. Hello. I'm back. Alright. <gasps> oh, this looks beautiful. Does it? Already? Have you been letting people know what they've been up to? No, I've been really can quiet. I, can I paint it yet? No. So it's going to need the magic of Hollywood or what? How quiet? No, it doesn't need that. No, I've been talking. Good. So I've just been concentrating getting around these curves. Did you yes. have your tongue out? Unless you start oh, poking your tongue out, you're not struggling enough. I don't do the tongue thing. Don't you? No. I That's don't, not I don't think I've heard. I, I don't think I can... I don't think I can learn that. What are we talking about now? Optrix. I'm, I thought I'd come in and see you with your mag visor on. Oh, no, no, no. This, this is fine for the moment. I hope it comes out when you get to do the little engine. Oh, I probably will. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smaller stuff, I, I, and your, I definitely need help. And your Tenno brush. Oh, I'm excited for that. Hey, the engine's my favourite bit. Is it? Yeah. I haven't done many model kits in my time, static model kits, but the engine is something that, I don't know, it's the heart of the, the heart of the thing. Well, it's the, the most complex it's the best looking, mechanical bit. It's yeah. the best looking thing in the car. Even if it is just static. So what I'm doing is I'm applying it and matching the lines and then just checking it from this side. Because you know how you can get the double line effect. And you're sort of like creasing it up on the inner radius. Yeah, so yeah, you see I'm stretching it and stuff. It's pretty masterful. And I'm using a whole line because I don't like doing multiple pieces here because you never get them matched properly. So if you can get it all on the one edge, it comes out more beautiful. And you, I suppose the hard, the hard bit, yeah, more beautiful, beautifuler. Bestest. Bestest lines in the business from Airbend to BJ. That's it. And I suppose one thing to be deaf, uh, you know, to be cautious about is when we start waving the, the hairdryer at it, is that we're not lifting corners and shrinking tape. Well, that's it. Tape. So I was talking about how the tape can move, particularly where it's stretched, like here. Mm, start actually lifting. Pulled it. That's right. It would naturally try to pull back on itself. And that's where heat will affect it. So if we can, it'll be better not to put any heat on this. Ah, uh, we'll be heating it. Is, is, that a, is that a go, is it? Ah, uh, I have to. 
Have to? Can't help it. Must happen? No, no. I'll probably just heat it a little bit on the outside prior to painting. Right. Heat up the paint. Have we got a little stick that I can poke in here and just push stuff around? I've got gizmos. Have you? Nine step. Oh, you got the gizmos there? <laughs> yeah. I don't go anywhere without my gizmos. Give me a gizmo. It was just going over the, the complex shapes of the, the These are light. the nine steps gizmos and the reason they're called that is because they just do a bit of everything. They do, don't they? Alright, so I'm just using that. And to if press you it forget in. your chopsticks with your lunch, you can couple them up as an eating device. That's that's good to know. Mm. That's good to know. I probably wouldn't cook with them. I don't know that they're safe for cooking. It's a good thing I've got some forks here. Is that what? Forks. Ah. Sorry. Alright, so I'm just pressing that in there. I thought you were doing a German accent. I was getting worried. No. So have that little taggy bit and I just fold them around. So I fold them around to make a little taggy thing. Just get it out of the way and it just doesn't stick to stuff. And I just make sure it doesn't like the best bit is where it sticks the to the back spray. of your arm. It gets stuck <laughs> in the hairs and then pulls all the pulls all the tape off. It's one of my favourite tricks. So you've done that have you? Mm. That you'll notice all, all my race bodies are very, <laughs> very um I don't know haphazard in the, the tearing of the tape. Haphazard. Alright, so... Uh, race bodies are a little bit different to the, you know, to this one. Not that this one won't be a race body, but this is going to be a showstopper. Showstopper, is this it? This is an Australian exclusive. So where have I got that? Just needs to be a little bit of adjustment. It's a great thing about this, you can sort of move it around and readjust as you go. The Tamir tape? Yep. And it's got a... Uh, I don't know, it's like, I won't say that it's super high tack and super low tack, but it's just right, isn't it? Yeah, it works really well. And doesn't leave residue. No, that's right. There are times when residue can come off, you know, if you rub it sideways. But it's quite easy to remove, you just get another bit of tape and you press it over the top tack, and tack. It, it pulls off, you tack it off. So I'm doing the stretchy stretch. Because I don't usually, like I said, now that it's washed and cleaned, I usually do not stick anything in there. I don't have to. Paint. Paint. You don't put paint in there? No, just paint. That's it. Oh, is that it? Paint and heat. And paint out comes and magic. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so let's see where we're at. So I feel a bit right. useless. Do you? I don't know, what can I get you to do? I don't know. So how about you talk about, what, what stickers are we going to put on? Well... Are we going to put them all on? No. No? No. You're going to be very selective, are you? Well, because it's got... The Tamiya decals for this one... Yeah. They're huge. And it's got yeah. big bonnet ones and big... I don't know, it's sort of... We'll have to see how it turns out. Turn, see how the colours turn out, because... I don't want to see it after it's painted, yeah. and, then we, and then we decide. I think so. It's like naming a child before it's born. I don't think that that's... You know. Well, you've got to see it first. Yeah, what if you like want to call your baby BJ, BJ or something? Yeah. You know, and then it comes out looking like a Jeff. Well, then, then you've just got to, like, I don't know. Yeah, you'll be in a bit of trouble, won't you? Well, Middle name right. might have to become BJ. BJ Jeff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I do like to just do the stickers. And not only that, but I don't like to cut them and lose them beforehand. Great thing about Tamiya stickers, they've, they've printed the best stickers ever. When you put heat on them, they bend. They're really pliable. They're almost like magic, aren't they? Yeah. They're, they they're, they've done them right from the beginning. Absolute craft people. And I can make, yeah, I, I don't know, I'm just a, a big fan. And stickers is not something that, you know, it probably takes sometimes the longest part of the RC build. Mm. Yeah, they take They're a bit even of longer than painting and cutting and masking. Yeah. Um, you know, and this one here is not the biggest sticker sheet that I've seen as far as the content of stickers, but there's definitely a few. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if we'd be doing those stripes, but I think the stripes look okay. Yeah, I'll see how the, the coarser grey turns out. Coarser grey or coarser blue? What's it called? Alright, so we've got all the curves in. Coarser grey. You, you want the, do you want the orange to go all the way across from here? Or this lower section? I don't know, you're the boss. I think the lower... The lower yeah, section, yeah, so... The, I think the lower section, where's the box? 
Well, the box actually, this is all grey. Oh, it's grey. Well, you're the boss, I don't know. Let me just straighten this one out. It has to be dripping oil as well. Does it? We oil is that a must? Oil stain. Well, it's Italian. Oh, do they all do that? Italian cars? Yep. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have folded this over yet. Even the really expensive ones are known not to hold their oil very well. Oh, really? Mmm. Alright, let me get another bit of this. If there's no oil under them, there's no oil in them. What? <laughs> do you know who doesn't put up with that carry-on? Who? The Germans. No? None no. of that? No. No? They can't stand it? Sound looks right. So what did you decide? Are you going to go straight down or across? I'm going to leave a bit across there. What, so, so going straight across? We'll go straight across, but leave a, leave a section across here. Yeah? That'll be grey there, and then orange across here. Whoa. And that way from the back, you'll still see a line of orange. Yeah. Yeah? Make it so. Make it so? Alright, let's do it. And there's actually a sticker to go on the, either on the rear firewall What's that looking? Looks like a pressing. Yeah, so it looks like a pressing, or it's on the engine floor. Can't decide which one. I think there's two. I think there's one for the engine floor and one for the firewall. Right. So that's going to be a nice little touch. I think so. A little scale touch. So I'm wearing it like a hat now. Eh? You? On your blockhead hat. Just so I can support it. We've got wipers. The wipers will definitely be going on. I love the wipers. Wipers, for sure? Yeah. Alright, so... I'm just and the, trim and the window the trim. The window trims are actually, they're quite painful to put on, but they actually really do look good on the two bodies. Add some scale, don't they? They do. They do. I've done one very recently that I can't expose now, but yes. Oh, I don't want to see you exposed. Don't miss. Look, you did the old look away. Now you did the old look away snip. I was looking at you, wasn't I? Yeah. There you go. The so that's all the engine's in done. Snip. So we're just going to fill in all these sections. Yep. You're and gonna then we'll read the spray. The big thick tank. I'm going to use the thick tank now. So I've got a bit of this. I'm not going to waste that. We're going to spray the coarser grey first. Yes. Alright, so this is going to take a little bit of time, but I'm just going to... You know what we should... Are we going to do a lame flake on this one? I don't know. Or have you got, have you got a lame bit? flake here? Yeah. And lame flake, for those of you who don't know, is a... The, the cap's black, but it's actually a, a clear pearl. And I think it might be nice in diffusing the light. Mm -hmm. Or do you think it's a bit glitzy? Well, I thought you wanted a dirty finish. Yeah, but it's like... You, you know, want dirty you... as in darker? Is that what you mean by dirty? Yeah, just not too crisp. And I think oh. that diffusing of the light... I'm looking around now at a victim of the lame flake. I don't know. I'm open. Open to the artist. We might let Jeff call it. What, lame flake or not? Yeah. I don't know. You can have a choose your own adventure. Can you? Yeah, put the coin. Or you could just do the left side and lame flake and the right side not. Well that would trigger you. Oh, I'm not I'm not easily triggered. The only reason I ask is because you want me to go heat up the paints. Well you can, not absolutely necessary. It is. Is it? Oh do you, do you have to heat them up, do you? Yeah, otherwise you're, you're a must heat up person. Yeah, I just find the spray pattern. Yeah. Um, and the atomization, if you will. Yeah. It's much nicer. You can definitely feel the difference. For those who haven't tried, heating them up, like putting them in a bucket of hot water. And that's all they do, is just put it, like, just tap hot water. Yep. Not in a saucepan, not in the kettle. Yep. Nothing dangerous. Well, I've got the perfect way of heating my cans. Well, you're not allowed to tap, you know, go on. I tell can't, people. I can't say. Well, I've got... it's a bit creepy. It's not creepy. It's a little bit. I've got a tube amp at home. That's also creepy. And it's always on, so it's always warm. And Is I it? put it on top of the tube amp, and it warms them perfectly. Like it's not too hot. Not too cold? That's it. It's just right, just like porridge. I thought you were going to say your other technique of keeping it in your pocket. Oh, that one? Yeah. I generally do that one here. 
keep it in your pocket and walk around the shop with it. Because it smells, yeah, it'd be rattling walking around. Yeah. Is that, is that a can of PS paint in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? That's both. Alright, there we go. So that's what we've done on one side. So you're just going to do exactly the same thing all the way around. I would like to see lane flake. I want to see a lane flake. Yeah? Yeah, we can do lane flake. Alright, I'll go heat it up. Yeah? You want to cook it? I'll go cook it. Alright, start cooking because this is still going to take me a bit of time. Now having tweezers could be helpful too at this stage because I'm just filling in the, the rear light. A bit hard to get to, but I guess with a little gizmo thing, I'll push, push stuff around a bit. And uh, I guess I'm a bit perfectionist on this because I don't like any overspray. Even though this, this part, if it had overspray, I'd probably get covered up by a sticker anyway. Push that in there. Another bit. I got it in Nan's favourite watering can. You do? Yeah. Don't let her know. Is it good? So I got it here in hot water. I feel like I'm in hot water at the moment. Why? What are you been doing? I don't know. I just feel guilty. It's not good when you feel guilty. I feel guilty and anxious, I don't know why. Really? Yep. Oh, you're admitting to that, are you? I can't help it. Right, so this is moving along quite well. Are you well. excited? I'm pretty excited. I think Tony Gray will absolutely love this. You reckon? The grand poobah of Mini himself. It's going to be a pretty simple scheme compared to the stuff he does. Yeah, I don't know how you actually do stuff like that. Well, it takes a lot of patience, isn't it? And a lot of skill. I mean, the masking itself is really time consuming. You see how long it takes just to do this. This is just only for two colours. And back in the, the old days, when he started doing his outlandish bodies, there wouldn't, wouldn't have been such things as liquid mask, was there? No. Would have all been hand cut. Yes. yes. Now there's graphic design programs and vinyl cutters and stuff like that. That's right. Back then, they would have been all hand cut. That's right. So it would have been drawn out. Full craftsmanship. Yeah? yeah. On a big piece of... Well, he would have drawn on the outside of these things. He would have done... Yeah, but he would have had to mask it, no? He would have had to Oh, yeah, he'll, it. he'll draw the design on the outside. Yeah, and then, then he'll tape it and, and then scribe it. it. Yep, that's right. Maybe we should get him in here one day and get him to explain how he did some of this stuff. I don't know that he'd like to perform on camera. Why well, he doesn't have to perform. Give away his... I wonder, I wonder if he still has any He used to do it in examples. magazines. Yeah, absolutely. He used absolutely. to do it in Dirt and Track. I used that's to look right. forward to his painting. Good detailed stuff. I remember distinctly, I think he did one on lightning. Lightning? Yeah, recreating lightning. Oh, was it? On the body shell. And doing the actual, was that actually on the mini when mini racing was huge? Yeah. Recreating this cut glass look on a Lexan body. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, with smoke and textures and all the lines and paint pen. Right. Good old paint pen. Yeah. Got one little bit that I've missed here. Yeah? But all those skills are just not in my uh, repertoire. Well, they could be. A repertoire, no. No, you, I know what I enjoy. I know mm, what I, I know what that? I know what I am. And I know what I'm not. I'm gonna need the end of this. Well, that's why it's a gizmo. Don't get your hair all stuck in the end of it. What are you talking about? Is that a joke? On tape, you know, you've got. Oh, so you're talking about my real hair. You stick it on the body hair. and there's like a spider leg hanging out of the... No, a bit of cat hair or pug oh, hair. I've got, I've got plenty of that. Yeah, pug hair, find it everywhere. Have I told you I've got a bag of cat hair? Every what? time I brush my cat, I'll keep its hair. I could make a cushion now. Why do you... Do you really? That, that, that creep level has just gone up another notch. Yeah. Are you going to make another cat out of it? I could. I've seen that. People have made a friend for the cat out of its hair. It's not for your new range of cat, cat brushes. <laughs> uh, no? No. Not, not making a cat merkin. Not I, I reckon that'll be itchy. Well, especially if you're allergic to it. <laughs> especially so. Can you be allergic to old cat hair or is it just the cat itself? Oh, I don't know. We could try. That could be scientific. I've, well, heard, I've, I've heard that the uh, the allergic 
reaction decay is actually from a protein from this saliva. Did you know that? No. Hmm. I thought it was from the hair. Well, it's because they clean themselves. Oh, because they lick themselves so much? Yeah, they lick themselves so much, clean themselves. And it can right. be... Yeah. So what does it do to you? Make you uncomfortable? Me? I don't does it know. do anything to you? Oh, I get a bit funky. <laughs> <laughs> last, thing oh. I, last thing you want is when I go funky. What kind of funky do you go? I break. Oh, full broken. Uh, my eyes get a bit watery and puffy. Oh, do they? My nose gets a bit... Just like hay fever. That's a bit rough. Yeah. For a dude that like keeps a cat. Alright, oh, that's alright. We keep our distance. <laughs> I know, I know my Same place. household. I know my, I know my place in the house. Right. I'm just his servant. The servant. Yeah. The food server. Definitely not his biggest fan. No. No. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard some of the stories. Mm. Of your cat doing ambushes and stuff. Oh yeah. It's like covert, isn't it? Yeah. It gets you close, then it attacks you. Well, I'll wait till I take this home for him to play with on the floorboards. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to do the edges now, then I'll fill in any gaps. I scared him once with the X-Max, he's never got over that. You did not. <laughs> I did might you? have. <laughs> oh, you're terrible. That'd be scary. I mean, I get I get scared with the X-Max. He was pretty scared. Was he? Well, he was sniffing it. Yeah, and what'd you do? You powered it up. I accelerated it. Oh, you terrible. Terrible man. Well, he didn't know I was controlling it. So what, so, so if your cat sees the X-Max now, what does it do? It's the runway? I don't know. It's not I haven't seen it again. The, the, the cat doesn't come in my office. <laughs> no? There's nothing not good, after that? Nothing good for him in there. Oh, I see. Oh, no. No, I think his hearing's well tuned. He hears the, fa the, the, the fan on the speed controller. Right. Oh, and then he knows it's out. because all the RC cars has got fans on them these days. Right. And that's it. He's done. He knows. He's, he's, he's gone. He's out. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the crack of the battery. <laughs> right. Crack! And the bzzz, that's it, oh, he's done, no. he's out. He's out, is he? Yeah. Let's go and get an asylum somewhere. You love your little bits of tape, don't you? It's more control. Power is nothing without control, I can see a hole. You can see a hole? Yeah, right in the middle. Don't believe you. I see it too now. It's a little hole. I didn't want to bring it out. Why not? And I suppose that's that's just part of it, isn't it? You just, like you said, lots of little bits. Yep. And you hold it up to the light. That's why you're holding it up like that. Not just to cover your face. For but the to the camera. The camera. No. But so you I can actually see what I'm doing. And you can see little pinholes through the tape. Hmm. Still doesn't work for me. Still Does it? No. Why not? Oh, I don't know. Probably because I don't pay attention. Your light's not bright enough. I just wave around guys. That'll do. <laughs> It adds character. Adds character. Yeah, yeah. that's it. There's Your nothing, perfections add character. That's right. There's nothing that a bit of, you know, thinners or the, to me, a polycarbonate body cleaner on the, on the cotton bud mm. doesn't just fix that. Can't fix. Fixes yeah. everything, eh? Not over fix it. Worst is window masking if you bugger that up. Window masking? What mm. do you mean? Oh, if it's slicked under. If you catch it before the tint goes on, it's all right. Mm -hmm. If you tint it, I think I bought tinting for this too. You did. We were talking about that just before. I think we should do just a, a really light thing. A of gentle tint. tint. Yeah. I just take the starkness out of it. Yeah. Okay, so we're done the front. I just got to finish off those the guards, which shouldn't take much. Guards. Are the they knight? Are they knighted? Hey. Front quarter panels. Knighted. Yeah, they're special. Alright, let's do that. I think further down the track, I don't think we've got the time constraints at the minute, but further down the track we should put LED lights on this. LED lights? Mm. Well, I was talking about that because the the headlights are actually opaque and they're chromed. And if we've got time, we could probably recast them in a clear resin and make some actual working lights for it. That would be cool, wouldn't the it? The headlights? Mm. What do you mean they're opaque? Yeah, they're fully chromed. That's why they've got the decals. Oh, it doesn't have a lens. Doesn't have. They're not clear. I thought it might have been a lens. But if we do that, we'll probably have what to do I the back of? as well. I'm thinking of the BBX. The BBX has got a whole thing of lenses. Oh, it has. A separate sheet. Yeah, you can do a whole heap of um, lights for that one. Is that what you're going to do? No. That one? No. no. Why not? Look cool, eh? 
I don't know, racing buggies shouldn't have lights. Do they have lights in the box? Huh? I don't know. Well, they shouldn't have lights. Of course they should have lights. Why? They look cool. They don't race at night. I reckon. Alright, so let's just get that in there. How's it looking? It's looking alright. That's a bit tricky because of the curve. The curvature. That's it. You That's are way more thorough than me. That's probably why your bodies look so much better. Really? Mm. Mm-hmm. I have not been keeping time. How long has it been taken so far? Like about, an hour? About an hour and twelve, I reckon. Oh, that's pretty accurate, isn't it? Looking at that countdown. <laughs> You're all clever. Wow. All right. All right, so that arch is pretty good. Just one more arch to do, and then a final check. They're almost like golden arches. They're making me hungry. I wonder why tape's that colour. So it's easier to see. Is it? Yeah. Because yellow, I think, Cause it's is, not a, is not a common colour to use, I think, when you're painting things. And it's always like the contrasting. But it is quite common, isn't it? Yeah, and it's, it's always, no? Yeah. Well, what about in the automotive trade? Is it still yellow? I don't know. Look at it is. I think it's just easy to spot. It would be a cool thing to get a Tony Gray to do a... No? A, a, body, a body shell that looks like it still had the masking on. Oh, yeah. That's a sort of paint the mask on it. Yeah. Well, all the shadows and things. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I missed you. I think I've missed something. Have you? Yep. A little bit on the edge here. But little bits, little bits. You know what that means? That means coal's coming on soon? That means that we have to start talking about shaking. Oh, the different shaking methods? Yeah, there's... You, you got... What, what are the different shaking methods here, you know? Alright, here we go. There is the... I'm just going to have a quick check There here. is the Japanese twirl. Yeah. And that's meant to be a very pro method. Is it? Yeah, apparently. The Japanese... You really have to... It's like quite zen. Yep. You so it's just, it's just rotating the ball along the bottom. Yeah. So the last thing you want to do yep. is get air into the paint. That's right. Or you've got the Mexican backhand. That's it. Yep. And we've all done that. And we've never had issues before, have we? <laughs> That's right. But still. So I can I can feel this peeling up now on the sharp edges. So we're are just going to make sure that we, we push them down. Are you going to hit it with the heat gun? No. No. Because it would just make everything pull up. Will it? Yeah. But I mean, if your paint is warmed, that should help. Make sure all the window masks are all flat along the edges. And, that's and then I when I spray... Cool mm -hmm. To do like a, a pearl or a clear first, because it will actually seal the tape more than actually do anything. Yeah, and I make sure that the first few coats are really thin too. And nah. you, because you don't want it... If, if your paint tends to pull and gives a chance to drip, there's more chances of um, going under the tape. And also, I, I think it, the paint sticks better to paint than yep. it does to polycarbonate. Yes. No? And it's so actually I'm going to have quite, to pay a bit of attention to these edges, yeah. It's actually quite tricky to paint polycarbonate because it's not very porous. In fact, I'd say it's non-porous. Hmm. Hmm. What shall we do? I think we're ready for painting. All right. So that's ready to go now. All right, so this is what we've done. We've used some of the lane flake and we've applied it onto the body, which is going to be really hard for you to see unless we've got something really dark to back this with. So let's have a look. I have got that dark. I might do the zoom edge. Actually see a little bit of debris that got stuck in there, but let's see. You see that now? So the really fine gold, green, blue, all different coloured flecks in there. I don't know that the camera's going to pick that up, Beige. 
thing you can see, you can also see the cat hairs that I've caught in there too. They've come off me. What, in, in my body that I washed? Yeah. It's got cat DNA. It has. They're going to be there forever. So that's a really subtle lane flake and you will see that when it's in like strong sunlight. Because when we back it with the, the grey, it's going to be pretty subtle. But there we go. So that's where we're at with this. Now, I'm going to try and get that debris out of there. Okay, we should just un... There we go. So the cat hairs are going to be there forever, I think. So I can't get rid of them. That's a feature. <laughs> That's right. It's character. It's character. It's character. It's character. All right, so what are you doing now? So you're cooking up the... Um... I'm just cooking up some coarser grey. Okay. So we can edit this bit out. Yep. Because it's going to be like three minutes. Yep. All right, so we've got that in there. Yep, I think it looks all right. It's very hard to see on the camera, but hopefully you'll see it a bit later. Oh, we'll right, say so it. is that cooking? Oh, it's still cooking. Can you so get it's, me that? It's sitting in the, um, the, little, the little container of water over there. Might give it a bit of a boost. You're going to cook it? Not cook one, it a bit? Not one for patience. No. Okay, so that's three really thin coats. Sprayed all over. Just checking all the tape now, just pressing down. Now those thin coats should help the edge of this tape adhere as well, like sealing it all in. These edges here, I'm quite concerned about those because they stretch quite a bit and they, they will pull up, so I just got to keep them pressed down while the, the coats are going on. But all in all, I think it's looking alright. And clear body is always very hard to get a grasp of shape. It's slowly getting there. Looking alright, yeah? I think it looks perfect. Alright, so what are you going to do now? So you got the cores of grey in your hand? Got the cores of grey. And you're preparing? Alright, we're going to start painting the cores of grey. Alright, let's go. Alright, so we're back. After the lane flake, we have our first application of the cores of grey which was a couple of really light coats mm -hmm. and then a heavier coat but this is going to need some more because I don't know if you can see it is patchy at the moment when I'm holding it up I can see it's patchy I want to get it to the point where it's no longer patchy a so patchy like a helicopter mm, a little bit different a little bit different than an Apache helicopter but I can see a lane freak, flake freak? lane flake coming through now don't I thought you were doing my punch can. voice then. That's, <laughs> a, that's, how she, that's how she says it. Really? So next time around I'm going to be doing some more coats. Mm -hmm. Holding it up to the light until it looks pretty dense. But I will also be painting the... Uh, the cover? Is the cover over there? The engine cover? The, cover? the engine cover? Let's see how the engine cover looks. That's so it's quite perfect. different, isn't it? Oh. Do you reckon it's different? I reckon the colour's slightly different. Are you happy with that? If you're happy with a match with that, then we'll just put a very light coat of lane flake over it and clear it. Yeah. Yeah? The lane flake will act as a clear, I think. Oh, will it? Mm. Okay. I'm happy with that. Oh, yeah? The match is good enough. Okay. Yeah. The, only reason, the only reason that we do it is for texture, but I think it's yeah. going to be... That Lexan's going to be very smooth and shiny anyway. It will be. I mean, the danger of painting that... Well, the only reason for painting that with the polycarbonate paint is to match the colour. Mm. If we do paint it with the polycarbonate paint, we're going to lose all that beautiful gloss finish. Mm. Okay, so let's leave it. It looks pretty good. Even from front camera, top camera. Good enough match, eh? Yeah, okay. Alright, so we'll keep it simple. We'll do a little bit of lane flake on that just to match the rest of this paint. Um, but I think that's it for this episode, yeah? Yep. So Next. this is episode four. Yep. Next episode we'll do the orange. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we'll dry that off and then we can do some decals. Yeah. And then bring it all together. That's right. So just to... Because um, you can do the engine as well. That's right. So you can do the engine the next episode. Yes. So just in summary, so we're going to add some more grey to this, which we won't show you. So yep. you already know what it's basically going to look like. And more grey until it's um, at its correct density. We're going to back it with some white so we don't get any bleed through with the orange. And... 
next time around, the tape's coming off. Okay, tape's coming off. Yeah. Orange, backing, and engine. Yep. Okay, sounds good. All right, so thanks for joining us for episode four. Of the Extrain exclusive MB01 build. Yes. I'm Brett from Hearns. I'm BJ. And thanks for watching us do this model for you. See you next time around.